What's up, cuckolds? Sorry for the delay in my videos. I haven't made one since Wednesday. Uh, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. That's why I've been a little bit busy. Uh, I spend the weekend with uh, loved ones, basically, and I didn't really have time. You know, my girlfriend was over for most of the weekend, and she doesn't know that I do these YouTube videos. Not that I'm, like, ashamed of them or anything, motherfuckers, <laughs> but... Um, you know, I mean, she's going to be here, like, doing some work or something. I'm not going to sit behind her on my desk and start yelling about wrestling, you know? I'd, I'd like for it to work out, motherfuckers. So, um, but obviously, it's not just that. I've just been busy. So, I wasn't able to do this. But a lot has happened. And this will be the first video of the night. Um, if I have time, I might do another video. Just talking about general wrestling news of the week, motherfuckers. And some general th thoughts on uh, A-Dub. I got a lot of thoughts on A-Dub, motherfuckers. That might actually be two videos that I do. So uh, let's get uh, this one out of the way first since Raw just ended. And I can start talking about this week's Raw review right here on the Hater Channel. 162 motherfucks and me changing wrestling one day at a time, fun bags. All right. First things first. The show starts immediately. I noticed that Samoa Joe is on commentary. All right. I understand this guy's injured and you want, you want to do something with him. And because he's like an ROH guy, somehow he automatically gets like commentary credibility. I'm not going to say he's complete garbage on commentary. He's completely like on the same level as every other wrestler that does commentary except for like, you know, Christian and Edge or like Bubba Ray or, you know, one of the ones that actually were good, funny and charismatic. But, uh, you know, I just noticed that and I was like, man, like, they just keep changing this up. Like, I guess the Dio Madden experience didn't really work out. I actually liked Dio Madden, you know. I was like, who the fuck is this guy at first? And then Brock Lesnar destroyed him completely and he's been out for like two months. So, uh, bring back Dio Madden, get rid of Samoa Joe and the rotating commentator. I don't like it, motherfuckers. Then, Seth Rollins comes out to apologize. They advertise this pretty, pretty heavily, you know. They're like, Seth Rollins will apologize. And I'm like... Dude, Seth Rollins was the universal champion. He was, like, one of the main... He was the main guy. Arguably, he was, like, the number one guy of 2019. And now he's apologizing? Can you imagine, like, The Rock in his prime coming out and apologizing to, like, mankind for hitting him with a chair after a tag match or anything like that? And he's gonna apologize? No, The Rock did whatever the fuck he wanted to do. And if you didn't like it, tough shit. He was gonna throw you and 29 other jabronis, or as I suppose 28 other jabronis out of the ring and win the rumble if you smell what The Rock is cooking. Or imagine Stone Cold coming out there, what? I said Stone Cold coming out, what? Stone Cold, motherfuckers. Imagine him coming out and being like, I'd like to apologize, you know, for doing what I did. For dousing Triple H in beer or Vince McMahon in beer. You know what I mean? No, he's not going to apologize. He's going to come out there the next week and give you give your ass a stunner. And if you're lucky, you know, and you you avoid him, he's going to show up in the hospital and beat you with a bedpan while saying, I got it from here. I'll take it from here, nurse. How great was wrestling back in the day, motherfuckers. Or even Eddie Guerrero, you know? He didn't apologize for anything. And I'm like, the one time Eddie Guerrero apologized, one of the greatest moments of Eddie Guerrero's career is when Paul Heyman forced him to apologize. He said, Eddie, you have to apologize. And Eddie says, Paul, I'm sorry. And then everyone boos, right? And Paul's like, I'm glad you apologized. And Eddie Guerrero says, Paul, remember when I apologized just now? Paul's like, yeah. He's like, well, I lied. I said, I lied. I cheat. I steal. Now, that we went from that to I'm going to burn it down and all this other stupid crap that I'm sick of, man. I am sick of it. Everyone has these like ridiculous catchphrases. And they just throw uh, throw in there with no like actual rhythm, you know? Like Randy Orton's like, we're going to have a match. I do what I want. And if you don't like it, you're going to meet the three most destructive letters of sports entertainment. R-K-O. Well, I got news for you, pal. I think A-E-W are the three most destructive letters because they're destroying my eyes and ears every time I watch and hear that garbage. You understand what I'm saying? But anyways, Rollins just goes full cuck and comes out to apologize. Kevin Owens comes out and says, uh, you're a bitch, you understand me? Then AOP comes out, right? And they challenge Owens and Rollins to a match. Rollins is like, word, I agree. But Owens is like, no, 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 fam. That would make it a three-on-one because I think AOP is in bed with you. So I'm not going to do that. And Seth leaves and says, I tried to help. AOP refuses to fight Fat Owens and they leave. Um, this this was like, all right, I guess. I, I like AOP. I like the new and improved AOP. They come out in suits. You know, they, they're like two, two monsters, man. These guys legit are great. And they're both like under 25. 
and they're both legit. Like, Razor is like a former MMA fighter. Now, he didn't make it to the UFC, but keep in mind, motherfuckers, he's like 23 or 24. He's like 21 when he signed with WWE, so he had his whole career ahead of him. God knows what this guy could have done. And the other guy, uh, Akum, this motherfucker, he was like, I read somewhere that he was going to be in, like, in the Canadian Olympic wrestling team. And again, keep in mind, he was like 21. So in eight years, when he's 29, let's say, right, or now in six years, he could easily go to the Olympics and do well. So these are two legit athletes, two legit badasses, right? And, like, they're forced to face someone like Kevin Owens who isn't afraid of them? Are you fucking kidding me? One of these guys would destroy both Kevin Owens and Rollins simultaneously. The two of them would destroy, like, seven Kevin Owens simultaneously. But nonetheless... Uh, they, they, I, I won't say they pussied out because they were just like, why are we going to fight this fat bastard for us? They just left, right? Commercial comes up. Kevin Owens is still in the ring looking for a match. Lana comes out, motherfuckers. She was looking fantastic, even though she was pregnant. The dress looked great on her. Lashley comes out, and uh, it's going to be Lashley versus Owens. Now, now, obviously, everybody knew that this match was going to end with Rusev coming in because before the match, Lana just said, Rusev can't come in because restraining orders, etc., etc. So the match goes on. Nothing really eventful happens. It was an all right match for what it was, but it was tainted by the fact that you knew it was going to end in a screwy finish like every other match that doesn't involve a jobber. You know, as a matter of fact, let's look at all the matches that didn't involve jobbers and see how many of them actually ended clean. So um, this match didn't involve a jobber. I mean, you know, obviously Kevin Owens is a jobber, but he's not treated as a jobber. So, uh, and it ended with AOP coming out and attacking Kevin Owens. Uh, wasting everyone's time with this nonsense, automatically AOP drops down a level, even though I just said they're awesome. And also, Razor, he has this like ridiculous haircut, like, like he's growing his hair out. I don't like that. They, he should be bald, just like Akum. Like these two monsters, you know what I'm saying? These two just like, like no nonsense type guys come out in suits looking like a million bucks and then beating your ass, super collider up in this bitch. So, anyways, people are chanting for Rusev. Rusev comes out, and uh, this is why Rusev is fantastic. Rusev, like, comes in, right? Oh, I should I should mention that before Rusev comes out, AOP just drags Kevin Owens uh, to the back, probably to rape him or something, because why the fuck would they drag him in the back? I'm sure that Owens is going to show up next week being like, hey, AOP, you beat my ass. But why do they drag him back? Why do people drag people back, man? That's like one of the wrestling's unanswered mysteries. Like, if it was like Kane, like when, when Kane dragged out like fake Kane, which was played by Luke Gallows, and like took him out, that... Like, the implications were that he killed them, man. That there was no fake Kane anymore. Fake Kane has been dealt with. If you get dragged in the back, that should be it, man. You shouldn't show up on TV for, like, months, if ever. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't like how they dragged him in the back. Rusev came out uh, while Lashley and, and Lana were, like, being interviewed and talking and shit. And uh, they had, like, these two cops uh, to enforce the restraining order that Lana got on Rusev in Tennessee. Right, motherfuckers? So Rusev comes in like, by the corner, by the turnbuckle, does, like, a Rusev pose where he, like, opens his arms up, which was fantastic, and then Machka kicks Lashley. This was great. Rusev is fucking awesome, and Crazy Rusev is even better. I love this guy. He's just, he's just fantastic, man. He, he really understands wrestling. Like, all this shit that I talk about Kenny Omega doing, like, 17 taunts, none of those taunts should be done. There's no reason why you would do a taunt before you dive out of the ring. The person already has like a million years to recover. He does a taunt, like a pose basically, runs across the ropes, then jumps over. Rusev does a quick little taunt just to hype up the crowd for the soon-to-come Machka kick to the face, and then does it, man. And then he goes crazy and runs out through the crowd. If you had told me when Rusev debuted that one day this guy would be like a face that did things like this and ran through the crowd, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? This guy, he has Vladimir Kozlov written all over him. But no, motherfuckers, I was wrong. Rusev is tight. So Lashley's yelling at the Tennessee cops, rightfully so, because they didn't do their jobs, right? Uh, I think, I don't know if he touches the cop, but he's yelling at him. The cop is like, look, I'm a big WWE fan, but guess what, motherfucker? This is Tennessee, and we do things a little different, which of course reminded me of, oh, you don't do the Dougie? Nah, we don't do the Dougie, not here in Kentucky, or something like that, motherfuckers. So they arrest uh, Lashley's bitch ass. That was awesome. Then uh, Lana starts like yelling at the cop, slaps him. The other cop arrests her monkey ass as well. And uh, they take him to the back and uh, put, put him in a car. This was fantastic because the security always looks like pussies, right? The, like the, a lot of the wrestlers and a lot of security are like jobbed out in the most ridiculous manner. You're a fucking cop. 
Like there's some cops out there that, that would like just arrest. They would like they would manhandle even someone like Lashley. There's some real ones out there, motherfuckers. Now I'm not saying these two guys could manhandle Lashley. It would take a Lashley level cop to manhandle Lashley. But you, you understand what I'm saying? Like it's one thing when Lashley does it, but when when Becky Owens, Becky Owens, when Becky Lynch slaps a cop, there are cops that be like, "What the fuck you think you're slapping?" Boom, handcuffs. Go to prison, motherfucker. So how come these cops, this makes me respect Tennessee. They don't tolerate this kind of abuse. The, the other security and cops tolerate everyone just beating their ass. So Tennessee, you've been put over tonight, motherfuckers. So anyways, uh, that was fantastic. Then we have a match. Finally, we have like a real match that will not be interrupted. Unfortunately, it's McIntyre versus Tozawa. So obviously McIntyre is going to do what he does. And that is beat jobbers and then not beat anyone else. So uh, the match was all right. Uh, fucking Tozawa was for what he is. He's great. I like Tozawa. He's like the best, the best Japanese guy uh, they've had in a long time since uh, uh, Funaki Taka Michinoku, and of course the greatest one, Tajiri. Right. So um, he loses when McIntyre does a claymore to him. The claymore flips him in midair. It was great. McIntyre then calls out Orton for no reason whatsoever because I guess Orton disrespected him last week. Orton comes out, doesn't give a rat's ass. McIntyre talks some shit. He says he's the future and Orton is the past. Now, I Google these motherfucks. Orton is 39 and McIntyre is 34. Hardly the future, dog. Hardly the future. Your time has gone. Either like five years apart and Orton is like a 14 or 15 time world champion, while McIntyre will at this point be known as being a jobber. McIntyre's return has been flaccid completely. McIntyre and Lashley, in my opinion, two of the best guys that they've signed in recent memory, should have been pushed to the main event immediately. I knew it was going to be downhill when they paired up Lashley with Sami Zayn. You know, what the fuck was that all about? They should have they should have put him in a program directly with Brock Lesnar. He should have had a Cain Velasquez type build because he because the Lashley would beat Cain Velasquez, motherfuckers. So anyways, I didn't like that. Um, uh, that segment with McIntyre and Orton because I mean, I don't want to say I'm over Orton because I, I'm learning to appreciate him as I as I grow older. But the realities are what they are, motherfuckers. This is the most meaningless th shit ever. If Drew McIntyre wins, nothing happens. He, he doesn't. He's not established by beating Orton. If Orton wins, he's not established by beating McIntyre. If he loses, he's not de-established either. So there's really no reason for this. This is the problem with not having a real hierarchy. I don't know where McIntyre stacks up compared to Orton. They're always they're, they're feuding for like the U.S. title. So I, what, what? They're on the level of Jeff Jarrett back in the day. No motherfuckers, Randy Orton's a 14-time champ. He should not even want to look at the U.S. title. Which, of course, reminds me when he was feuding with Jeff Hardy for the WWE title or the World Heavyweight title, whatever the fuck it was, and Jeff Hardy was Intercontinental Champion. And Orton goaded him into a match for the IC title just to low blow him and beat his ass. And, like, uh, Jerry the King Waller is like, oh my god, Orton, he doesn't care about the IC title, so why the fuck would Orton care about the U.S. title, man? Doesn't make any sense. Anyways, I digress. Anyway, the next thing is the OC comes out and AJ is angry that Orton cost him the title. This is part of the same segment, uh, I suppose, right? This, I like this, and here's why. Because he was not pulling a Kofi Kingston being all normal after losing a title, uh, especially considering that his title, the US title, the one that he lost, is much less prestigious than the WWE title. Kofi Kingston should be like attacking Brock Lesnar with a pipe like Rey Mysterio is doing, but instead he is okay with being like the tag team champion and wrestling like fucking Dash and Wilder, Dash and Dawson, whatever the fuck they're called, you know? It doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, AJ Styles, who lost the US title, which is like a job or belt really, is angry at Orton for costing him the title. I like it. This is why I like AJ Styles and the way that he's been booked generally. They go attack Orton. Ricochet comes out to save the day, they whoop his ass. Humberto Carrillo comes out to save the day, they whoop his ass. And then Rey Mysterio comes to save the day and they get the upper hand. Backstage, Ray asks and uh, Randy, uh, Randy Orton, if he's all right. And Orton is like, "I appreciate what you did, Ray, but I don't need your help." So this seems to be the beginning of a slow but steady Randy Orton face turn of some sort. Then we have uh, another jobber match: Tony Nese versus Alistair Black. Now I had a few problems with this match. Number one, Tony Nese beat Buddy Murphy at the pre-show of WrestleMania. I want to say two WrestleManias ago, I think. It could have been this WrestleMania, right? I, I don't remember. Let's see. Tony East was champion, then Drew Gulak was champion, and now fucking Leo Rush is champion, right? So maybe it was at last WrestleMania. I think it was. Uh, this was... It was embarrassing, considering the fact that it was the most meaningless match in the history of matches. 
Like, everybody knew that Tony Nese becoming Cruiserweight Champion meant absolutely nothing, right? So, uh, he beat Buddy Murphy for the title at Mania, and now he is going to job out to Aleister Black, who is supposed to have a serious feud with the same Buddy Murphy, right? This also makes Aleister Black seem like a 205 Live jobber. He's wrestling all the 205 Live guys. So why, like, what the fuck? He came from NXT, he's this big deal. He's like, oh, pick a fight with me. And the only people who want to pick a fight with him are 205 Live jobbers. They're like, oh, okay, fine, I'll pick a fight with you. I'm not doing anything with my career. It's not like fucking Lashley. It'd be great if, like, Brock Lesnar came out and said, I want to pick a fight with you, boy. Now what? And then Allison Black goes for, like, this little black mask and then gets Kimura somehow or gets F5, just like that. That would be a fantastic thing to see. But anyways, these people are jobbing out to like, like they're, it's a feud between cruiserweights. So Leo Rush should just come and beat all these guys and that should be the end of that. Leo Rush beat Drew Gulag, who beat Tony Nese, who beat uh, Buddy Murphy. Leo Rush, who would get slapped around by Lashley for like saying the wrong thing. You get slammed like a little bitch that he is. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. So anyways, um, but I will say backstage, they did a little interview with Buddy Murphy and I will say Buddy Murphy is jacked, man. This guy, whatever the fuck he's on, uh, is working because I remember when he was in NXT, he was this flabby, like little shit. I'm like, this guy has like no future here whatsoever. And then he uh, worked his ass off, probably took some uh, peds, and now look at him. Now he, now he's, you know, I don't want to say like a mid carder, but yeah, he's kind of a mid carder, I guess. So, anyways, it is what it is. Next, we had Andrade, who I like very much, against Eric Young, who I also like very much. Eric Young deserves better than this. The the sheer fact that fucking uh, Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander and Ricochet and these idiots are out there like getting actual like opportunities and Eric Young isn't is ridiculous. Eric Young has a very good match in my opinion. I mean, considering what it is, right? You're not you're not gonna steal the show with like ten minutes, but he has a good match with Andrade. He does his elbow drop, which is the best elbow drop in the business in my opinion, and then he does the little uh, Young Bluck Young Bluck. Young Blood Neckbreaker, as it was called in TNA, which is like a wheelbarrow neckbreaker, right? I think it's called the Edge of Sanity in uh, WWE. But anyways, he does that, which is his finishing move, and Andrade kicks out. I don't like when that happens. I mean, I knew he was going to, but I don't like when that happens. When it's like, well, what can he do? He did his finisher. You, you won't go down for his finisher. So what's he supposed to do? He goes for another elbow drop, misses, ends up in the bottom of the turnbuckle. Andrade does a double knees to the, to the upper chest thing, hits the... The what the hammerlock DDT and wins. You know, it, it, it felt meaningless. Andrade, I'm pretty sure, is like undefeated since coming to Raw. So I don't know why people like Kevin Owens are getting like the rub. Why does either give Andrade the push that he deserves or don't motherfuckers and have Eric Young do something better, man? Fuck, put him in 205 Live. I don't care. Have him do something. I like Eric Young. Everyone should, everyone should like Eric Young. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go on a quick tangent here. Tell you guys one of the greatest things in the history of TNA. There was this angle. If anyone remembers this, good for y'all. There was an angle. Eric Young, his gimmick was that he was a pussy, right? Which was a great gimmick. Uh, he was just afraid of everything. This was a good gimmick because it, it started off like he would come out with like, uh, I don't know, Petey Williams or whatever. Whoever the fuck he was tagging with at the time, right? Like Kazarian and shit. He, like, he'd come out and the pyro would scare him, right? He'd be like, oh my god, the pyro. And he would like, like overreact and then the partner would be like, what are you doing? Like, stop being a bitch, right? And he would be afraid to make tags. And he was just like a pussy. And as a result, because not fighters, weak people get bullied. He started getting bullied by uh, fucking Goldust, who was Black Rain at the time, and like Mark Jindrak, who was Relic or whatever, some other asshole who played Relic. These two big guys who were who had like evil type gimmicks were bullying poor Eric Young, right? Who was a pussy. And then Kazarian, who was getting his push, what like stands up for Eric Young, and he's like. Yo, don't, don't bully my friend Eric Young. He's awesome. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, what? I give a fuck about you, Kazarian. So they started beating his ass. So then they have a match. Kazarian and Eric Young uh, versus, uh, what's it called? Relic and Black Rain, right? And Eric Young is too much of a pussy to show up. So it becomes a handicap match. You know, Kazarian's fighting like valiantly against these two monsters, right? But they're big. They're like 6'5 each. They're, they're big motherfuckers. And Kazarian is like a cruiserweight. So they're whooping his ass. They're whooping his ass. And then as like Kazarian is about to get his ass beat. And Goldust is going to hit him with his little weapon thing. Like this music starts playing. And it's like Superman-ish music. Like dun, 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 like that kind of shit, right? But all of a sudden, it clearly Eric Young comes out. Dresses a superhero. This was fantastic. And he comes out. Does like a Superman pose where he puts his, his uh, wrists like on his hips. Right, and stands up straight, and then the pyro goes off, 
and he doesn't react at all, right? Because now that he's wearing the costume, motherfuckers, he's confident Eric Young, aka Super Eric. Super Eric comes in, tags in Frankie Kazarian, and starts beating the shit out of these two guys. The match ends with Eric Young putting them both on the turnbuckle and lifting them up in a double attitude adjustment, slamming them and pinning them. This was fantastic. I was like, this is just great wrestling right here. But anyways, I digress. Now Eric Young is res resorts to jobbing to Andrade. It is what it is. At least he's got a job, motherfuckers. Then, our truth is running around. He's getting chased by the usual motley crew of retards. And he is saved by Kyle Bush and some other guy who are um, fucking... Uh, in the crowd. Kyle Bush is like a NASCAR guy, I think. Then after that, Kyle Bush reveals that he's after the 24-7 title when the other guy takes off his uh, jacket, revealing referee shirt. Kyle Bush rolls up uh, Truth and wins. Great. This is stupid. This is what I'm talking about. A lot of the wrestlers seem like either pussies or retards. Mojo Rawley has been chasing our truth presumably, for months now. And he hasn't been able to pin him. Meanwhile, like, Kyle Bush comes up with a very simple plan to defeat the retard who is our truth So let's, let's figure this out. Like, Kyle Bush puts a hole, digs a hole in the ground, puts sticks and leaves on it, and waits for the retard to fall in the hole so he can pin him, basically. Meanwhile, Mojo Rawley, uh, who is a big guy, and who apparently in real life is a smart motherfucker, right? Uh, an educated man, if you will. I know a guy that knows him, motherfuckers. So, um, he, uh, can't figure this out. He, he can't figure out how to trap our truth But other people figure it out immediately. The 24-7 title needs to go away. It is a waste of time. Then we have No Way Jose coming out to job to Eric Rowan. No Way Jose has his, like, No Way Jose conga line, right? Who also gets destroyed by Eric Rowan. Now, this is a complete waste of money. You're paying these people. Let's say you're paying each one of those people like 100 bucks. You're paying them 100 bucks at least to show up and dance like idiots on TV for like a couple hours of their time, right? So, like... You know, or I, maybe you're not, I don't know. But let's say you're paying a hundred bucks. It's a thousand dollars. You just like threw down the drain in order to like have this this entrance and this meaningless match happen. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, Eric Rowan is a complete waste of time. This will lead to absolutely nothing, man. It's the same thing with it's the same thing with all, every every guy that you see right now that is having matches with jobbers will end in nothing. None of these guys are good enough. It's just it's a waste of time. Then we have the Kabuki Warriors in a handicap match with Charlotte, who almost beats them despite them being the tag champs. The match ends with Charlotte putting the figure eight leg lock on Asuka, who has apparently tagged in Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane goes up to the top and does her elbow drop, which is inferior to Eric Young's elbow drop. And people are like, I remember when they signed Kyrie Sane, they're like, oh my god, they finally signed Kyrie. Oh, she's nobody fucking knew who she was, but they're like, oh, I've seen her in like Shiver Lights Wrestling. She's the WWE or whatever, the Shimmer Lights WWE Champion. Uh, she has the best elbow drop in the business. And people are like, what? And then people like people would actually have lists of who has the best elbow drops. Eric Young wasn't even mentioned. It was, you know, the usual suspects. Macho Man, of course, right? And then they have like, in everyone's top five, there was like Bailey at number three. She has the best elbow. Oh, CM Punk has the best elbow. But no one's elbow is better than Kyrie Sane's. I'm just like... You fucking, you douchebags. It's obviously Eric Young. Like a, like a perfect elbow. It looks like he hits you completely. Him, even Velveteen Dream and the Purple Rainmaker is better. And that's not even that great of an elbow. So anyways, it, it was what it was. No one really gave a rat's ass about this. Right? Next we have the, the main event. Uh, the OC versus Ricochet, Rey, and Humberto Carrillo. Uh, which is ridiculous. It's like Rey Mysterio. It's just make it Rey Mysterio versus AJ Styles. Why do you need these other guys in the match? They're all jobbers. So AJ Styles hits an avalanche styles clash on Ricochet and pins him. Orton RKO's AJ from behind, and that ends the show. The fact that people like Brock Lesnar at this point refuse to even show up, to even have a feud, like he doesn't have a feud. He beat Rey Mysterio, right? And that's it. He beat Rey Mysterio. I guess he got his revenge. He whooped his ass. So he's done. He has no reason to come back. And now we have to feud over the US title. Like Rey Mysterio is now like the, the most important guy on fucking, what's it called? Monday nights. And on Friday nights, you could argue it's Bray Wyatt, but it's not. It's not. It's it, it's got to be Nakamura. Bray Wyatt's not out there wrestling on a weekly basis. He'll come out there and you know, he'll attack people, but he's not like like you can't put the fiend. You know you know like when they have like feuds, they'll take two people uh, that, that have a feud and pair them up with two other people that have a feud and put a tag match. You can't have, put the fiend in a tag match. He's supposed to be this crazy retard. How, he, he should understand how tag matches work, even though he's a tag champion. But you understand what I'm saying? 
So he's limited in that regard. The two most important people in your company, the two champions, are limited. One doesn't show up, but he's Brock Lesnar, so we forgive him for it. And the other one is a retard who now wears a mask, and his, he, has a, he has, like, two titles. He has, like, like the blue title, which, you know, is a complete, like, abomination, right? <laughs> the way, the way that, this, that joke should have gone is like this. He has two titles. One of them is a complete abomination and is disgusting, and the other one is the Fiend title, you understand what I'm saying? Because even though the Fiend title is easily the worst thing ever created, it looks like a piece of shit. It looks like something that I would make at home if I was like a super fan of the Fiend and take it with me like an asshole to live shows and be like, oh, I'm the Fiend! Like a retard, you know? So, um, yeah. So you have these two idiots, and neither of them are out there putting in work, motherfuckers. So anyways, this Raw was... Uh, not entertaining at all. I'm not going to say it was complete garbage, but it just felt like every other Raw feels. A bunch of mid-carders. You know, it, if you're going to put the strap on Lesnar, and you have to, you, you really have no choice. People are like, oh, I don't want Lesnar to be champion. Look what happened with Raw's motherfuckers. They made him the champion, and you motherfuckers turned on him. So what the hell's the point? As soon as someone becomes champion, everyone turns on him. Because they're like, well, why is he champion? Well, I think Drew Gulak should be champion. That's like the story of the smart. When someone they like becomes champion, they just like someone else. When someone they like goes to WWE, like Nakamura, they're like, Kenny Omega's number one. And then when he goes to AEW, now people are like, oh, well, Osprey, he's a real star. Oh, I really like Tanahashi now all of a sudden. Okada was great all along. Shut up, nerds. Nobody cares about this nonsense. So anyways, that's what I have to say about that. And I'm feeling very, very verbose, motherfuckers. So after this video, best believe, bitches, I'm going to do at least one more video. The next video is going to be, uh, I think, yeah, it's going to be the top 10 worst wrestlers right now motherfuckers so get ready for that one all right i'll see you